Hello. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the use of Lego locking bricks to model surface structures and the absorption of gases onto crystal surfaces. To model individual atoms, we use standard rectangular bricks on the right generally for the atoms of the crystal structure and the so-called round bricks on the left to model atoms of the absorbed gases. By a fortuitous coincidence, the colors of many of the Lego bricks are the same colors that are widely used in computational chemistry to represent individual elements. For example, the color red represent oxygen atoms. We would use white to represent hydrogen atoms. Carbon atoms are represented by this dark black. Nitrogen is represented by this particular shade of blue. In many types of computational chemistry, a slightly darker shade of blue is used. Now, currently LEGO is distributing uh, round bricks with this particular shade of blue, but if you're able to find older Lego bricks, they were manufactured in this particular color, which is how I was able to obtain this particular type. For green, this turns out to be a uh, clear green uh, round brick. We can use the green to represent halogens. And uh, last but not least of possible absorbent atoms, uh, we can use yellow and reserve yellow for sulfur. And we know that sulfur is a very important atom, particularly in catalysis because it often poisons metal surfaces. To represent the actual crystal atoms, uh, we can generically represent them, as we said before, by the rectangular bricks. And to make it look a little fancier, we did something non-standard and we took the standard white rectangular brick and painted it a metallic gold. And this is just to remind us that these particular metallic gold colored bricks represent particularly metal atoms of the crystal uh, structure. And just so that we are, can more easily distinguish uh, the colors of the atoms that make up the crystal surface from the atoms that make up the adsorbates. These small circular projections are called studs. The base plate here has a very convenient uh, square arrangement of studs, which allows us to use it as a very convenient Cartesian coordinate system. So for example, we can develop a simple square lattice starting up here. And then we notice that the next um, metal atom in this direction along this vector is four studs away and then four more studs. So the translational distance in this direction is four units. Similarly, in this direction, the translational distance is four units and the angle between the two vectors is actually 90 degrees, giving us a square lattice. And in this particular case is the simple cubic 100 layer. Next, we overlay our figure for the simple cubic 100 surface, which also includes visual information as to the size of the unit cell. And we see that unit cells are surrounded by the dark lines. We also have the absorption positions labeled. So for example, where we have the particular atoms of the metal, these are the on top positions. So for example, we could have an oxygen atom bind directly at the on top position. That's the T position. And we recognize for this particular surface that when we bind at the on top position, we connect directly to one of the studs. There are other absorption positions in the simple cubic 100 structure that do not involve direct uh, contact with the uh, surface 
uh, metal atom. For example, we can have absorption at the so-called bridge site. So in between two top sites, in between two metal atoms, we have a position called a bridging site. And we can model the bridging site by simply inserting our gas atom in that particular hole. It will not be binding to a metal atom below it, so it will not be a tight connection, but we can simply uh, insert it in the hole and put it in the proper position for the bridge position. The other important position, which is a clearly important position, is the so-called four-fold hollow. So directly in the center of this square section, again, not directly over a metal atom for the simple cubic 100 surface, but we do have the absorption position and we can model adsorption of the oxygen atom at that particular position simply by inserting the stud on the round red brick for the oxygen atom into the hole in our paper figure that represents the simple cubic 100 surface. Using standard issue Lego blocks, we can easily model most important gas reactions on metal surfaces quite easily. Here, let's uh, imagine that we're viewing the surface parallel to the surface so we can get a side view of how we model most of the important adsorbates and how they will adsorb to metal surfaces. Since we are using red to denote oxygen atoms, we can model dioxygen O2 with two red round bricks. Typically, oxygen binds uh, side by side with each oxygen atom binding to the surface. So essentially, it is parallel to the surface in many cases. Since black represents carbon atoms, red represents oxygen atoms, here we have a model of carbon monoxide. And we know that carbon monoxide almost invariably binds to metal surfaces normal to the surface and through the carbon atom, which is properly denoted with our small model side view here for carbon monoxide. With blue for nitrogen and red for oxygen, here we have a model of NO, nitric oxide. In this particular example, it is perpendicular to the metal surface and binding through the nitrogen atom. Typically, if it binds perpendicularly to the surface, it will bind through the nitrogen atom. It is also possible for NO to bind parallel to the surface so that both the nitrogen and the oxygen are bound to the surface at the same time. Here is dinitrogen, N2, azote, bound normal to the surface. Here we have N2 bound parallel to the surface, and we notice that very often when this happens, and each of the two atoms in a diatomic molecule, for example, are both bound to the surface, in the process, the bond holding together the diatomic molecule breaks. So we call this dissociative adsorption. And here we have it for N2. Here we have H2 bound parallel to the uh, metal surface, again, uh, demonstrating dissociative absorption. Here we have a nice model for any dihalogen, but in particular, it represents very nicely dichlorine, Cl2, with a parallel uh, adsorption to the surface and dissociative absorption. And recall that uh, when chlorine breaks up, it breaks up to form chlorine atoms, which are free radicals and which are incredibly reactive. So this dissociative absorption of chlorine is an important reaction in general. And so here is how we can model it using our Lego bricks. It turns out that the simple cubic crystal structure turns out to be not very common and not as commercially important as many other structures. However, it has the advantage of being simple and allowing us to provide an introduction to this general system of using Lego bricks to model uh, reactions at metal surfaces, particularly involving catalysis. So please join me 
for future videos in this series that will explore more and more complex crystal structures and more and more detailed analysis of reactions at metal surfaces. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.